Next you have your HD audio. All right. So same different same thing almost. You have the see you have that blank spot where it's supposed to go. This is for all the audio and that's attached to the front is your microphone, your headset for the audio. It says here for audio, we're looking for um, jawed one. You got to look on the motherboard there. See, jawed one. So remember, you see the blank, you see the, the no pin. All right. It's pretty much set up right for it. There's no pin in here. There's See the no pin? So you gotta make sure everything's lined up and push it in. It came with a nine a nine seven, but a nine AC97. But if I look in the book here, it looks like it's audio too. See AC97, it looks like it's audio too. Mic, mic power, um, left, left out, left ret, you know, under the ground. So it looks like that's for audio too. But I'm gonna try the HD first to see what happens. And then if I get my um, headphones and everything working by the time my computer works, then I know I did the right thing. Let's get to the next step. All right, guys, so next up is the power. All right, um, we technically hooked up everything that was required in the front of the tower case. Everything has been hooked up. Now, we wanna do some wire management. We don't want this to look all junky and everything like this. So if you guys have any zip ties or anything like that, or you can use, or you can use one of these, all right, whatever, you know, what it came with, um, you can use that as well to try to do some wire management. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tie up the wires and make sure everything looks neat. So that way, um, we could continue on with the power part of the process for the power side of things it's pretty much self-explanatory all right these connections here they're all for your um your power for your cd for your cd rom dv rom um also for your hard drives as well so that's what these connections are here for right now we're working on the these right here the bad boys all right, you want to put the front lip, this front lip toward the outer because on the inside right here has no front lip. So that's how you know you got to do it the other way. The next power supply slot is over here, right? Is right here. That's the next power supply right there. So we're going to take one of these because actually these came together. All right, these came together. It looked like, cause you could actually merge these two in and it looked like one big, uh, one big power unit, but actually you can take them off and split them in two. All right, so if your motherboard doesn't have all eight and it only have the four, you can take it off and split it. All right, so that's where we're gonna connect it. Make sure you look for the lip. All right, this is the prong. Make sure you look for the, the lip on the actual piece here. There's gonna be a part extended, extended here. So make sure you look at that and then you clip it in. All right, and that's for that. Now time to open up my eight core processor. So let's open it up. Uh, all right guys, this is the brain right here. You wanna take very good care of this particular CPU. Well, all CPUs, matter of fact. Um, you do not, you do not want to bend any, any prong, all right? If you look at this side, you see it's a whole bunch of prongs. You do not want to bend any of them. This is crucial when putting it in, so you have to make sure you're putting it in right the very, very first time. All right, now if you look, there's a corner, there's a golden corner piece. It tells you where that go corner golden piece is supposed to go. All right, this is the fan. This is the fan, guys. All right, that's the fan. All right, guys, currently you are looking at the CPU socket, all right? You're looking at the processor socket, all right? The AM3 Plus, now. This is naturally down, so you want to flick it up. If you pull it up, that means your um, 
unlocking the actual case part of it. You're unlocking it because that's the locking mechanism to lock your CPU down so that it would not move. All right. Now, if you look closely here on this particular spot, all right, you see that notch right there? That notch right there tells you on the corner that that's where you need to put the actual chip. You're gonna see that same notch here. So that's where you wanna start, all right? That's how you know you're putting it in correctly. So let's do that. If you look on the top of it, you see there's the notch on top as well. So that's how you know you're gonna put it in. So let's put it in. Gotta be extra careful. See, it just fits right in. After that, you want to lock it. So to lock it, push this uh, lever down. And that's how you lock it. Now, this bracing that you see around here, that's for the fan. So let's attach the fan. All right, guys, this is the fan, all right? Now, this is the heat sink right here. This is the glue, all right? This glue actually mends on on top of the actual processing chip. So that way it stays with it and it doesn't go anywhere. So I believe once this heats up, then that will start to melt and then that will cause a, the gluing action to begin. And I think that's where it, that's how it gets mended on. This is the power to the fan. So this is the CPU fan. So this is where you want to insert the power for the fan right here. Now when putting it in, you want to you want this to face the 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 actual slot that you got to put it in. All right? So that would be the smart thing. All right. So now you're going to plop it in here. All right. I'm going to hook this side in here first. All right. Then I'm going to go on the other side and push it down and click it in. All right. Now, both sides are now in. Now I'm gonna take this and pull this back all the way to locked. Now it's in its locked position. And last but not least, you're gonna plug your the power to the fan in the the, the white spot that I told you guys earlier. Make sure that you do it this way because you're trying to look for that prong and the little the little lip there. So you're gonna put it right behind here. And that is it with the CPU fan. All right, so next is the DDR3 RAM. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like. Look, look pretty nice, actually. Nice little gloss to it. You got your dim slots here. Um, You want to open the flaps, all right? I'm gonna open them. I bought the DDR3s. They're only able to fit DDR3s in this motherboard. You can't go back and put DDR2s or DDRs in this actual motherboard. So it only takes DDR3. So keep that in mind. When putting in the actual, when putting in the ROM, you have to look for which is the dim one we usually have it marked the blue is dim is dim three dim four this is dim one and dim two it's hard to see but it's on the actual motherboard itself see dim three dim four and also it shows it by the fan you see dim one right there so that basically means the very very top is dim one the very second one is dim two and then dim three and dim four. You will be putting it in the very first black spot right there that's close to the fan. The motherboard senses the RAM in that slot first to make sure everything is running and then it does the rest after. So if you only had one DDR3, you will be putting it in that first slot. But since I'm going to fill up all four dim slots, um, it doesn't really matter to me. So let's get to it. Okay, so putting in the RAM, there's a notch on the RAM, all right, right there, there's a notch. So you wanna match that notch 
up with the actual um, notch on the actual um, dim. All right, so it's gonna look like this. So make sure you put it in the, make sure you put it in correctly. You hold both of them even, hold both ends, and then you're going to make sure that they're in by pushing it down gently until you hear a click, all right? Until the lips fold in, then it is in. So there you have it. So altogether, 12 gigs of RAM inside this motherboard. All right, so that's how you put in RAM. That's pretty much what we have done so far. Don't look too bad, don't look too bad. So we set everything up on the motherboard, all right? That you can possibly set up. So now we want to go and set up the hard drive and we want to set up the actual DVD ROM. Just make sure everything's okay as far as when you put it in the motherboard, make sure everything fits, make sure you didn't make no mistakes before going into this step because you don't want to go backwards and have to take everything out. All right, so just double check yourself. Screws, you make sure you screwed everything in tight, nice. Make sure the fan is locked in tight, not moving, all right? Um, make sure your RAM is tight, pushed in all the way. And make sure your power and everything is in the right spot and plugged and pushed all the way in, all right? So it snaps in place. To start even putting in the hard drive and also the DVD-ROM drive, um, you need to take out this side here. All right, so I'm gonna take this side out because we're gonna, when we try to put it in, we're going to need that side as well as this open side here to put it, to um, screw them in. Now you see here, that's what it looked like, all right? See, that's your motherboard underneath here. This is where we put the, the gold screws. But we really need right here so that we can screw it in. We could screw the DVD-ROM and also the, the hard drive into that particular bay. These are called bays. So this is your pretty much your extension slots, your 3.5 your, um, inch uh, like hard drives or whatever, you know, that can fit there. And then you have your 525. All right, you got the 525 here. Next, I'm going to install my 3.5 inch hard drive. Okay, my Seagate hard drive I have here. I'm going to put this here at the very bottom. The reason being is because I can't push it all the way in for this particular hard drive. Um, I don't know why, but the screws match up here. See? Screws match up right there. So that's where I have to put the screws at. But for some reason, um, it sticks out like almost halfway. So I don't want to put it anywhere up here because it causes more confusion for me to pull out any, any of the wires if I need to replace this hard drive. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there at the bottom and start um, and plug in the power and the connector to make the hard drive work. So now that we're lined up, let's screw it in. So what you want to do, we want to take the screws. All right, you want to take this screw right here um, and screw it into the empty slot. And then you're gonna do the same thing for all of the other sides. So something like that. Make sure everything's nice and sturdy. Yep, hard drive's not moving. So there you have uh, your installed 3.5, one terabyte hard drive. So now that we're done with the hard drive, we want to start to put in the DVD-ROM, all right? Or CD-ROM drive, whichever one you have. See those prongs right there? You, we need to take off the face, all right? So this whole, so this whole front face is all um, binded by the tower by these things here. So we want to squeeze and push this out. So we're gonna squeeze and push. All right, so we're gonna do that for each and every single one that's around the case altogether. And then uh, we're gonna take the front case off. 
All right, so this is what the front of the case, tower case looks like when it's off. Um, I can't take it off completely because I did um, already attach the wires, everything, to the motherboard already in the very beginning. So I guess that's, uh, I guess I should have kind of put this first, the DVD ROM drive first, but anyway, uh, it's still gonna work out to where I can still fit it in anyway. We just want to slide this in here like so. Just like how you normally would see it. And boom. And it fits right in. All right, so you see where those screws are at? That's where you want to start screwing in the um, hard drive. So after you screw them in, you're gonna put the case back on and then we gotta take this out here. Usually, you could just put, there you go. So, what you wanna do is just push it out like that. Gonna have that hole here. All right, so um, after you uh, push it out, then you just put everything right back the way it was. So I had to push it out more because when I closed the case in, um, the actual front case, it didn't fit right, adjust to it. But as you can see, I can still screw it in. Um, see, I can still screw it in and it'll still be fine on all sides. So this is the other side. And as you can see, everything's screwed in. Everything fits perfectly. That's how you would put it in. Make sure it's flush. Make sure it's flush. Make sure it doesn't stick out. The reason why I didn't say to put in the speaker, right? I just realized it already has one. See, it's right there. That's the speaker. That's what make the do -do 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 -do, the little buzzing noise every time you start you turn on the computer and also your warning sign. So that is it right there. Now we have to add in the SATA cables or serial ATA cables as they call it. So you want to just plug it in like so till it snap and then you're going to plug it into the motherboard. All right. So the motherboard has SATA onto it. So just run it behind here. Doesn't matter which slot. This is long as it fits in. And there you have it. So now um, <clears throat> you want to put in the SATA cable for um, my hard drive. So again, we're going to snap it in like so. All right, and it snaps in. Plop it in like so, till you hear a snap. And then that is it. Now, after you put that in, you're going to put this, you put the other end into the SATA slot on the motherboard. There we go. Now we want to do the power. Now for the power, you're going to need these thin, uh, these thin um, power supplies that power the SATA. All right, so anything SATA, you're looking for this flat piece of power right here. Also, when you hook it in, make sure there's a, uh, let me see if I could zoom up here. If you look inside on the tip, there's a notch. This notch right here, it, it looks like an L shape almost. So it has an open spot. So if you look for that same L shape on the actual SATA device that you have, hard drive or DVD drive, then that's what you want to uh, pl pl plug it in using that L shape first so that you won't damage anything in the back of it. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, snug fit. And that is it. I just did some light management for right now just to try to clean myself up so that I can see everything. Let's move on to the next. I'm going to install my Vision Tech uh, 6350 one gigabyte PCI Express card. So it pretty much looks like this. All right, got HDMI, got DVI and VGA. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure the outside is pointing towards the out the outer bay. All right, so you, you want to definitely do that. Also, you have these slots here. All right, see these slots? You have to take a screwdriver and yank it out, sort of, sort of speak. So you gotta 
pull, pull, up, down, try to get this metal out. It's bendable, so you're not breaking anything. It's, it's breakable, it's meant to come off. So after a good shaking, um, it comes off, all right? And this is the slot where you want to put your uh, PCI card at. All right, <clears throat> so we're gonna install it. Push, just push it in until it clicks. As soon as that happens, pretty much got to screw it in. So I'll take one of these extra screws here and uh, screw it in to the actual tower. All right. So there you have it, a sturdy, PCI Express card. All right guys, so we're almost complete. I'm just gonna show you guys how to set up the fan. All right, I already have one right there, but I'm going to set up another one to show you how you can install your fan. All right, so I'm gonna use these screws right here. Um, this is a little bulkier screw than the usual screw to with all the other screws that came with the case. But I used the first I used the first fan in here. It's something called system fan. Alright, you see that? That's the system fan right there. So that's where I plugged the first one at. Um, I previously turned this on, right? Turned on this fan. So I have this fan blowing air into the computer. Now I'ma have a fan to blow the hot air out of the computer all right so that it'll be able to circulate um the wind i mean the heat and everything like that accordingly so that way it won't get too hot i had to get a four pin to three pin all right so basically it takes my power supply this right here didn't come with this particular with this particular uh three three pins so i had to go and get a extra one right i had to get an adapter basically so i'm going to install this fan so now when we put in the screws we got to make sure it lines up all correctly so just make sure the holes line up and then screw away so there you have it i installed it they're kind of tough to put in so make sure you screw them pretty hard you know pretty well in um these are just old fans i had laying around so I just popped them in. All I had was four screws left to use in this particular tower because it came with only four screws. So um, I definitely used just two screws on each side um, diagonally to each other so that they would hold sturdy and do the job. This is the final result of the PC. All right, so now now we want to power it on, so I took the power cord, all right, and then plugged it in. So let's see if it works, shall we? First time's a charm, right? <laughs> Here we go. Oh, look at that. Dang, I'm too good. No hiccups no beeps no nothing like that so that's a good sign when you start it up so no beeps or anything very good um uh let's see cd-rom works fine so we are in the clear guys so just add your operating system and you should be on your way but other than that guys this is my pc you have now learned how to officially build APC.